Okay, this, uh, this webinar is about Lean 4.0. And basically, this is uh, the, the, the symbol of Lean 4.0. Uh, it comes from a European project in which uh, the HAN is involved, a project together with uh, the Norwegian University, with a university from Germany and a university from Belgium. And we are looking at 4.0 from the viewpoint of the operations manager. So what does industry 4.0 and what does lean, and especially the combination between the two, mean for the operations manager of the future? And we are puzzling with that, and we are developing things. Um, the program of this webinar is as follows. First of all, I will give a short introduction about Lean and Industry 4.0. It will be very short, but just to mention what we see as Lean and what we see as Industry 4.0. It's too limited, but I will spend one minute on it. After that, um, I will talk about the stages in the development of lean in companies, and especially in small and medium enterprises. That's based upon uh, research we have done uh, uh, one year ago, also in the area of lean 4.0, in a couple of companies, and we saw that there is a kind of a kind of similarity in the development of lean in companies, and I hope you will recognize it. Of course, in every company, it goes a little bit different, but you will also see some similarities, we believe. But then you see the stages. And there are also stages in the development of Industry 4.0 in companies. Um, I will also explain that by means of, uh, of, of a simple scheme, and I hope probably you can recognize some parts of it. Then we have spoken about stages in the development of Lean and stages in the development of Industry 4.0. And then we'll go to practice. We go even more to practice by means of three case studies. And uh, Mitchell Van Roy and uh, Melanie de Vries will present these case studies. These case studies come from our Lean 4.0 project. And then you see that different companies are going a different route towards the development of Lean and Industry 4.0. But then you also see how these elements uh, connect to each other in these companies. Uh, based upon that, linked to that, I will present a Lean 4.0 taxonomy. And that's a tool we, we, we developed. And we have an idea about how companies can develop and what it means that if, what it means that if, a what it means for a company to be a lean 4.0 company. And we have a kind of ideal picture from it, and we want to share it with you. And it also, the picture is also based upon input from, uh, from managers uh, from, from different countries. Uh, we will explain that in point six, towards the social digital company. But first, the introduction. Well, Industry 4.0, perhaps you've seen that uh, in the first in the first uh, uh, industrial revolution, mechanization was important, water power, steam power. The second uh, industrial revolution, then uh, electricity gain, so decentralization, uh, well, the assembly line, mass production, came the third industrial revolution. And I think many companies are still busy with the third industrial revolution. Then computers and automations are important. And to a certain extent, uh, a robot is industry 3.0. A flexible machine, a CNC machine is industry 3.0. But then connecting all these things and the connection, the, the connecting all the information systems and all the manufacturing and, and, and product uh, elements together and connecting them all, that's industry 4.0. And it's the total connection. So that about industry 4.0. And Lean, it's even, I think most of you know Lean. This is for me the, the nice picture that, that shows 
everything about lean, I would say. And the first is a, is a boat where everybody is doing everything in his, his or her own way. Every department, every employee with, with his or her own interests. And in the second part, it's more aligned. Uh, we are going to the same direction. Uh, all the activities are aligned. And to get that is not easy. It's not mechanics, but it's also culture. It's also a way of living within the company. So this, as a short introduction about industry and for industry 4.0 and lean. And we believe that uh, uh, companies and operations managers have to cope with lean and have to cope with industry 4.0. But what is the link? Um, now, first of all, what are the stages in the development of lean in companies? And basically what we see as a kind of system is first that many companies, many SMEs, when they start with lean, it's local. It's, it's almost ad hoc. First we're solving small problems and then it's going to local lean, I would call. And they, uh, there's a certain department, there is an operations manager or there is a team leader. He went to a course or a, a seminar. He's enthusiastic. He asks an advisor and he starts with local activities like 5S, uh, uh, organizing organizing uh, things on, on, on the, the work or stand up meetings, etc. to have a local stuff. But there is a ceiling. Uh, you cannot do do that only. When you the, the next step is that you have to think about the value stream itself, because you can sub-optimize things in a local area, but then at a certain moment you need to connect the whole value stream, and you can reduce setup times. But if you only reduce setup times, you get a couple of savings. That's important. Uh, but you will gain especially profit when you change the value stream, when you reduce lot sizes, which also have impacts on other departments. So a lot of cooperation is needed. So that's the next step. And in many companies, they already stop in the first, after the first step. Then they are happy. Uh, efficiency gives a lot of efficiency. And uh, because other departments, other groups are not willing to cooperate a lot, then it stops and many times the managers who initiated it leave the company. So this is a ceiling. And in order to go, the next, to go to the next step, we see that cooperation, cooperation becomes important. But then there is also a ceiling because then people improve, people are enthusiastic, they improve the value stream. But at a certain moment, the question comes, for what are we doing that? What's the purpose of it? Uh, and then Hoshin Kandri, we want to have all the noses of everybody in the same direction. So then st the strategical link becomes important. Hoshin Kandri becomes important. So the, 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 the alignment of all activities on all levels of the organization and also between all the different departments of the group. Because only within one level, within one value stream won't work, you need to align the whole organization from top down uh, to bottom, from, from top down to, to uh, and, and, and also bottom up. So that means strategical linking, but there's also a, link, a, a ceiling from that. And then to go to the fourth level, what we see is that what I would call evolution network, uh, evolutionary learning, networking within the company. Everybody is connected. They can find each other. Uh, a lot of experiments, discussion, practice, thinking about what has to be done within the whole company. Of course, it needs to be organized, but it's more a network. And it's something what's also recognized by researchers at, uh, at Toyota, for instance. It's very difficult to find the organizational structure behind Lean because it, it's, it's fluid. Everybody does have a contribution. Uh, with respect to the own abilities in the organization. So it's not completely functionally uh, uh, yeah, organized how the improvement is going. Um, so 
these are the stages, and we will see it back uh, in, a, in a few minutes, the, the stages, what we see in SMEs in, in companies. And it's interesting, there's also a kind of pool, uh, because there is a ceiling, and we want to go up that ceiling. Uh, this person is doing effort, and sometimes he succeeds. Many times they don't succeed. So it's not a value stream improvement. There's a ceiling. Sometimes they exceed to get more Oshin Kandri, and also the top management is involved and uh, gives a good example. Sometimes they are not succeeding and it goes out. But there is here a ceiling again because people have to learn, and learning is an important word here. And uh, management also have to learn to give the good example and to, to, to change the culture and to uh, give everybody the position he or she uh, uh, yeah, deserves and can handle. Uh, so that that also needs a, 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 a new thing, a new step. So this is about the development of leaning in companies. I hope later whether or not you can see it. Now the stages in the development of Industry 4.0. Well, first of all, uh, this is a kind of the architecture of uh, Industry 4.0 in a company. First of all, all the information need to be linked. And in practice, there are lots of information systems, several, several uh, separate information systems, not linked to each other, but they need to be linked. And that's important to gain connected information systems. Uh, these are information systems like ERP systems, like uh, product data systems, etc. But of course, you want to know also, if you have all the information, what is the situation at the work floor? So smart product uh, order information. So we need to know where is my product at this moment in the factory and how far is the product going on at the moment? So you need to have good product order and actual status information, and they should be available where, uh, where and when useful. Um, it's not only production orders what, uh, what is important, but also resources are important. So what's the status of our resource? Can we use our resource? Does it need maintenance? Uh, also workers are resources. Uh, so to what extent are, are our workers available and, uh, and are they uh, present? And can we use that information to make smart decisions? And that's the next step. We make smart decisions. And basically, I've de decided here, de 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 distinguished here, smart total quality management and production activity control. So smart total quality management, that's basically the first step. And so, so in industry 4.0, and we have an information st structure, we have a direct connection with the current status of the factory, and we can have a, a quick feedback whether or not the, the quality is okay, whether or not there was an accident, or whatever, and that's all mainly done in, in companies because of quality, quality control, and not about planning and control. And that's the next step, planning and control. And then you need this part, the smart resources part. But an important element in it is the human being, our humans. They have to deal with all these information and with all the, the information gathered from products, resources, and the information system. So they are informed workers, support in activities, and good decision making. So now I have told already a little bit about the steps. Janis, Janis, could you could you go back to the uh, four stages of lean? Because uh, Kees Stal asked the question whether or not you uh, you've identified uh, companies in the Netherlands who already uh, achieved the fourth level of uh, this uh, this uh, yeah, uh, staging. Uh, I think the only thing what I've heard is, uh, well, I'm, I'm speaking uh, every week with Yoshino from uh, from Toyota, and I'm asking how is Toyota organized and who is giving who advice and how is, and it's difficult to find. So this is more based upon what I heard from uh, from Toyota. Uh, in certain companies like, like for instance, uh, well, Scania, to a certain extent, they have this kind of structure, but it's difficult to maintain that. So I'm not sure 
what other companies uh, there are. I know a, a, a few small companies. I'm, I'm, it's a little bit risky to mention their name, but uh, if um, if K, I, I will send case a paper of a company which is going more or less in this direction. And so 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 I've not seen that, but I know that uh, that there are companies experimenting it with uh, autonomous groups and with uh, uh, with all kind of of other structures. So evolutionary learning, basically the term comes also from uh, from uh, Toyota, from a study done by uh, Takanara at uh, at Toyota, saying how uh, uh, how learning is always focused on not on the day of tomorrow, but on the day of the day after that. Probably this is not the correct answer, but I do not know exactly. I cannot give an, a, a clear clear answer on that. I hope this is sufficient. Let's go to the to the next uh, step. I, I explained a little bit Lean 4.0. When you see that in, in four stages, then you see, well, in the first first stage, it's computerization, so functional information systems and industry for 3.0. That's important. And so CNC machines and, uh, and pro probably robots is important. Then you get connectivity. That's the second phase. And you get integrated systems uh, and providing useful information. Then the, the next step and the link of, of with the product information and resource information gives a lot of visibility and traceability, which is extremely important for quality control, for total quality control. And many companies that have implemented Industry 4.0, they are basically, when you ask them what's the profit of Industry 4.0 for you, then they talk about quality control, quick feedback and fast, fast uh, decisions. But when you go a step farther, and then you talk about self-learning and predictive power. So then you look in the future and you see uh, you have a lot of uh, data and based upon the data, you can make, make better decisions and better and better decisions. And you have probably digital twin because you have all the data, you can simulate uh, optional decisions in the future in order to make a correct decision in reality. But I've not seen many companies in this area yet. So there is a lot of development. Also with Lean, there is always a lot of development that need to be done. So the next is a kind of scheme, a little a simple scheme. Here you see the Lean improvement maturity level from, uh, uh, from Lean. And here you see uh, the technology maturity level from industry 4.0. So, and where are companies, and how are companies developing in these four, in 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 this scheme? And for this, I would now like to give the floor to Mitchell or to Melanie. Yes, thank you, Janus. Uh, hi all. Uh, I'll I'll introduce myself uh, briefly, and then uh, Melanie can introduce herself as well just uh, so you have an idea of who you're talking to, of who is talking to you actually. Uh, my name is Mitchell Verroy. I'm uh, a lecturer and a researcher at the uh, um, Han Lean QRM Center and uh, responsible of uh, identifying and uh, describing this exploratory case and uh, whether and what trajectories organizations follow to uh, yeah, implement Lean 4.0. And now my uh, colleague uh, Melanie <laughs> will introduce herself as well. Hello, I am Melanie de Vries. I'm an assistant researcher at the Han, and I'm currently also finishing my uh, master's degree in organizational design and development. And together with Mitchell, I also followed the three cases that we will present today. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, like uh, Janus described, the Lean 4.0 journey and in, into a, a maturity model. And of course, a maturity a model uh, is uh, an, uh, a simple version of the reality. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a way to uh, describe the complexity of the, the real world into a model. So of course there are some uh, uh, discussions possible, but as uh, Jan has described and also many other scholars, there's 
according to them, a, re a relationship between lean and technology or in industry 4.0 on the other hand. Um, for example, um, the use of smart glasses and smart watches in order to um, uh, influence or increase the, uh, the possibility to identify errors, for example, the Andon aspect of, of lean, uh, or the use of AR, augmented reality, in order to uh, make flow visible. Uh, researchers say that that's a, a way that Industry 4.0 could help uh, an organization to become more lean. But the other way around, scholars also suggest that a certain level of leanness is necessary to identify and specify where and what uh, Industry 4.0 technology might be helpful for them to implement. Um, an example of that, for example, is that Industry 4.0 technologies are costly. And um, scholars state that if you uh, have a high level of lean maturity, you're able to identify where and what technology might be useful uh, to, uh, to implement. And that also that that could help you to reduce your waste, for example. Um, so uh, there's a discussion about the connection or mutually reinforcing effects between lean and industry 4.0s. Um, that led us to the following yeah, question, actually. On the one hand, what is the optimal route for organizations to follow? And on the other hand, what are organizations nowadays doing uh, in their uh, maturity, in their trajectories? And in order to uh, answer that, mainly that last question, what uh, trajectory do organizations follow uh, today? We, we, we follow three cases in an exploratory way um, that, that yeah, showcase the improvement pro their improvement in the both uh, lean maturity and technological maturity. Um, so, uh, one case is about a metal wholesaler. Um, and we'll just introduce the, the company uh, a bit uh, more uh, broad in the next uh, slide. The other one, the case two, was an elevator producer. And case three is a pipeline inspection. Uh, a large organization as, uh, specified in high variety, low volume uh, pipeline inspection tools. So, um, the first case, I would like to give the word to Melanie about the metal wholesaler. Yes, thank you, Mitchell. So uh, I would like to take you to um, the road that this company took um, in their way to lean and technology maturity. Um, the company is, uh, like Mitchell said, a metal wholesaler, and they offer an extensive range of steel, stainless steel, uh, aluminium and non-ferrous uh, products. Uh, they have more than 75 uh, years of experience in this market and they can be classified as a large organization. Um, the project that we followed for a couple of months um, concerned a big lean transformation of the primary processes. Um, so they were primarily focused on creating pool and creating flow in these uh, processes. And um, by means of an yeah so-called improvement week, the management and employees and external parties came together to specify what will our processes look like if um, we want to follow lean principles. And that was the starting point for uh, this project. So first I would like to describe the lean starting point. Um, before they started uh, the project and after I will describe um, the technology starting point um, for this company. Um, so uh, this company faced a lot of growth. Um, uh, customer orders um, yeah, increased and therefore they had to do something to be able to gain their market position as they were the, the leading uh, company in this market. Um, the location, they have two locations and there was no um, expan expansion possible of those locations and thus they wanted to improve the internal processes to be able to uh, increase the, the demand and therefore uh, the improvements were needed. Uh, at the start of the project, Lean was uh, applied locally but um, yeah, there was a lot of improvement possible. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so the, as the operations manager uh, mentioned, the processes were not under control. Uh, the, pro the products that they uh, have have a high uh, variety. Um, and that was uh, difficult to manage. And there was also a lot of movements, a lot of rework had to be done. For example, the cars of the trucks um, uh, have to be loaded and sometimes they have to go backwards and forwards. And um, yeah, there was a mess. Um, and uh, there was a lack of standardization and therefore um, their journey was focused on improving lean. And with regards to the technology, um, we also um, see that they uh, at a local level made use of some industry 4.0 and industry 3.0 uh, technologies. They for example um, had an auto automatic storage uh, retrieval system um, to be able to load the, the small parts into the trucks. Um, they um, did have an information structure but was not that well connected and uh, they had uh, bought many add-ons uh, um, and that increased the complexity of the system. Um, and sometimes uh, the system also lacked functionality, so the desires and wishes they had from the system were not, uh, the system could not uh, deliver that. So uh, then the project started and I would like to go months later and see um, what they achieved. Uh, so as you can see, they uh, especially uh, gained maturity in with regards to lean. Um, so like more uh, on yeah, one and a half uh, points. So it was a lean driven uh, journey. Um, they mainly invested in lean and continuous improvement and especially in developing the knowledge and skills of the employees. So um, they from the start, they uh, gave trainings and let them experience what lean feels like and also during the project they uh, um, yeah had a lot of attention uh, for this uh, development um, um, at the beginning they did a value stream analysis so they uh, built a, a cross-departmental um, overview of the processes and then they divided that into um, yeah, improvement points, so to say. And they um, used four Kaizen groups or project groups to work on these improvement points. And uh, each Kaizen team was focused on yeah, one part of the process. And together, they, when they merged, they uh, should have uh, achieved the lean, uh, lean processes. Um, yeah, so that is, um, would you like to add something to that? Yeah, just briefly. Uh, so for your understanding, it's uh, like I mentioned in the introduction, uh, you could, you organizations, uh, you have uh, just the reinforcing effects about lean and industry 4.0. And based on that, we looked at what are what are the uh, steps they are taking uh, in towards that, tri uh, that, that direction. Because you could argue that the, the, the dotted line is the most uh, efficient way to develop both lean and in the industry 4.0 but what we found is in this first case is that this organizations took consciously the, the the pathway the trajectory of first investing in lean before identifying uh, that uh, certain technologies could be helpful for them um, so that's what i would uh, want to uh, address and uh, yeah. add but uh, very good um, yeah so you could uh, elaborate yeah. Yeah, I would like to say something about uh, technology and maturity. So, uh, like we have seen, they developed, especially in uh, becoming a lean organization, um, but they encountered problems that asked for a technology solution. So, um, that's why the, the arrow points to the right. They saw that they needed some technology to be able to uh, yeah, solve these problems or to gain efficiency or uh, whatever. Uh, so they started to examine uh, some industry 4.0 uh, solutions and during the project they also had an open mind to technology solutions. Uh, but for example, they um, invested uh, 
for gathered information about real-time information about products and trucks and how to um, use 3D algorithms or technology to be able to load the truck in the most optimal way. Uh, so these ideas are present within the company and they're now busy with finding out what suits our, our processes the best. So the process um, is uh, the starting point and from there on they uh, look for the best technology or other solution. Um, yeah, and they're currently also developing a uh, industry 4.0 technology. Uh, so also on the strategic level, they formulated a digital transformation uh, strategy to also incorporate um, yeah, technology on the highest level. So what have we learned uh, from this uh, interesting case that uh, yeah, try to develop in lean first before um, going uh, further with uh, technology maturity. Um, so as I mentioned before, they uh, worked with four Kaizen groups or project groups, and um, it was very uh, helpful during the project that they started with this improvement week uh, where they came together and created a vision of where they wanted to go to and that, um, that shared understanding of the current and future processes that um, help to take the steps within the projects to see where we're going to, so that they all went into the same direction. Um, and for this shared understanding to create that, they um, developed a game. And Mitchell, would you like to share your thoughts on uh, this game? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so um, this 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 company took a, a lean driven uh, trajectory, and uh, things they they uh, stated to us that is really helpful in their learnings is uh, is one of them was creating this a certain shared understanding of the current and future processes, and what they did to uh, create that understanding and create that urgency is uh, making use of gamification, and uh, gamification is uh, is a um, is a technique you could use to reduce complexity. Uh, reduce the, uh, oper the the real life complexity into a game and experiment with what would happen if I uh, do this or what what would happen if I do that. And uh, based on these games and based on these gamifications, they came to ideas and implemented it in real life. Uh, on which uh, after uh, they found that uh, if they want to uh, really make use of those interventions, they uh, might need. Uh, more real-time information about the current uh, um, uh, position uh, of uh, trucks and the current uh, loading uh, abilities of um, the loading docks, etc., etc. So the gamification part uh, helped them to, on the one hand, invest in their uh, operational processes, in the lean process, but at a certain time when they invested and they experimented with their interventions, they found out that um, in order to make actual use of their new process, they need to develop, uh, develop and invest a bit in industry 4.0 techniques. So that wasn't actually a really interesting finding for us as, as research for organizations that follow the lean driven pathway, is that my, that gamification could be helpful to address the whereas the um, uh, the operational process could be improved and where and how the technologies could uh, be useful. Um, so that was on the one hand, and on the other hand, we uh, had a, a second case, of course. And the second case is a global, uh, yeah, producer of customized and sustainable elevators. Um, it is a is a bit smaller company, um, and um, yeah. So they uh, and they, of course we also start with the lean starting point and their technology starting point. But to start with the lean starting point, it was actually quite interesting. This company has had just like MCB, I uh, really ad hoc or locally adopted uh, lean uh, maturity. So they were locally able to uh, experiment with, uh, for example, uh, problems and solutions and uh, in, an, in a sustainable, in a uh, uh, 
yeah, in, a, in a sustainable way to develop their thoughts about the projects and how to imp uh, how to improve them. But they were also a bit different compared to the first case because this organization was investing a lot in um, developing from uh, uh, from uh, engineer to order to configure to order. And in, to, in order to do so, they invested a lot in a, a product configurator, a real-time product configurator. And um, so their technological maturity was also almost already to the visibility and traceability uh, part of the maturity index as specified by Janus. So their starting point was a bit different. You could even argue that they started with a more technology-driven trajectory. Um, it was interesting to see that uh, the lean knowledge was not spreadly among the whole uh, organization, but was really locally adopted, and that the project projects, the overall projects, uh, apart from the uh, configure to order to of engineer to order to the configure to order, that it was actually um, not really strategically linked, and um, yeah. So to say, they invested a lot in industry 3.0 technologies and uh, started with industry 4.0 technologies. Uh, that's what I explained uh, just now. But what they did was actually quite interesting because this organization did not uh, make a conscious choice about we are going to invest in, in, in these projects, are we going to invest in lean, are we especially going to uh, invest in the technology even further? What they did was multiple projects simultaneously. They invested in the technology. Okay, um, they were a lot of uh, fires that had, has to be, had to be put down. Uh, okay, we need to adopt more uh, uh, leanness here because we don't know what, what is expected of us. So what they actually did was uh, doing a lot of projects simultaneously in order to uh, yeah, develop their uh, maturity. In both in both directions simultaneously. Um, yeah, and what we what we actually uh, have learned from this case is that um, it is not easy to combine lean development projects simultaneously with industry 4.0 technologies. Um, you might know that uh, that investing in lean. Uh, takes time and effort and new routines need to be developed. While the investments related to the industry 4.0 technologies are costly and uh, is expected also from uh, the higher levels uh, that, that is uh, easily returned, that the, the costs are easily returned. So there's a sum of incongruence between incongruence between the, uh, the, the time and effort it takes to develop lean to a certain level and the shortness that uh, is expected from the industry 4.0 technology to be uh, returned. Um, and what they've said, the, 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 their, operate, their manager said that it would be help, that it really is helpful to, for, uh, for uh, employees to develop a certain level of problem solving capabilities uh, related to these, these new technologies. For example, he stated that the use of A3 methodologies might be a way um, to, to learn employees to develop a structured way of how to improve projects. And that a clear strategic alignment and a clear vision of goals is essential for improving and investing in Industry 4.0 technology and projects. Um, also because... Um, uh, a good way and a clear uh, strategic view uh, decreases the dependency on the, on the strategic views of external parties. Um, we saw in this particular case that um, due to the co high complexity of the industry 4.0 technology, this organization became highly dependent on their uh, supplier. Um, instead of that the organization asked of the supplier how and what should my organization of what could your uh, in your technology do to uh, improve my processes it turned around the supplier stated we our technology can do this and you should adopt your processes to this so in order to tackle that and to reduce the dependency on the strategic views of the external parties you could you really must be have clear what your process should look like and also the strategic alignment alongside. Um, 
Additionally, they stated that when you adopt Industry 4.0 technologies, it is essential for you to have a sort of black box or a testing field where you can implement the new software or implement new uh, activities and experiment that in a black box or before implementing it in your real product portfolio. Um, did I miss something? Um, no, I think uh, you were right, right to comprehensive. Okay. Um, so actually this, so where the first case really took a lean driven pathway, a lean driven trajectory, this organization uh, did choose or followed, you could argue whether it's chosen or whether, whether it just they went along. They went a bit of the uh, both uh, trajectories simultaneously. And the third case is uh, the case uh, about a market leader, um, highly technological market leader in pipeline inspection systems. They are uh, is a large company compared to the other two. Uh, over 4,000 uh, employees and operating in more than 120 uh, countries. Um, this company is uh, known for its R&D and high variety and low volume. Um, but what was interesting <laughs> is that even in this company, which is growing really fast, their uh, lean maturity was also quite locally adopted. Uh, in, this, in this specific case, we looked at the robotic uh, uh, system um and robotic uh, uh, um, uh, processes and the problem solving in that in that process was really actually ad hoc um and like their manager or like their ceo also mentioned is that he wants to invest in a, a more structured way of problem solving related to that robotic solutions he stated that the, the, the skills necessary to adopt and, impl uh, and uh, improve robotic systems are a bit different than, uh, than the usual all-day operational processes. Um, actually, to be really precise, the experiments and learnings were not structured and stored within the, uh, within the organization. Uh, could you elaborate about the technological starting point? Yeah, so as Mitchell uh, mentioned before, this uh, company is really technology driven. So they're always uh, looking for new technologies or new opportunities or. Uh, um, so uh, the first case invested in lean and this case is quite the opposite where technology is the starting point for. Uh, yeah. Uh, the processes um, and uh, they saw that they needed an increased capacity uh, because um, there was a growing customer demand and um, um, yeah they saw that um, because of the high variety and low volume uh, processes the employees had to have a lot of um, competencies and uh, skills and in the direct environments um, they could not a lot uh, there was no room for, to hire more employees so they um, decided to invest in robotics to be able to deal with this growing uh, customer demand um, and therefore they invested in robotic solutions or for example also uh, throughout the company in augmented reality um, and therefore um, we placed them between two and three because they uh, were already at the start of the project. Uh, yeah, to some extent, uh, mature in uh, with respect to technology. Um, so uh, the project uh, was done. The robotics were uh, implemented, and what we see is that um, the what um, the operations manager mentioned is that the robotics um, had implications for both the process and for the humans that have to operate with this uh, robotic. Uh, with regards to the processes, we see that uh, kind of balancing needs to be done to make sure that the rest of the process that becomes before and after the robot, that, that it's balanced because the robot works 24-7, seven uh, days a week and humans do not. 
So uh, at Monday, when the robotic, the robot had worked um, for the whole weekend, they had a lot of stock and uh, the humans had to make sure that that was processed uh, thereafter. So what he wants to give to other companies um, is that it's important to uh, create an overview of the whole process and how the robot um, it takes its place within this process and what the consequences are. Um, and on the other hand, um, uh, robots are new also for humans, so we do not yet know how to handle a robot and new skills and knowledge um, is needed to be able to deal with that. And within this company, uh, they did not use lean principles to be able to deal which is uh, yeah, developing new employee routines. But what they did is creating small uh, improvement groups around uh, a robot. Um, and within these groups, there's a lot of informal contact and continuous improvement and working together with a manager uh, who had some communication skills. So they really focused on informal communication. But between these uh, groups, there was lack of communication. So the learning stayed within this uh, small group. And what they saw when they implemented the robots is that they had to go up so to the lean maturity to also develop um, a yeah, continuous improvement routine to make sure that the learnings and the problem solving uh, is done in a more structured way. Um, so that's what the operations manager uh, mentioned. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. You 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 could argue that this organization followed the uh, the technological driven trajectory. Uh, they invested a lot in, in in new technology in order to uh, create their higher capacity uh, and to, in order to uh, uh, to be able to fill the gap in competent employees in the in the nearby surroundings. But they found out that uh, only investing in the technology on itself is not enough to make optimal use of the processes, such as Melanie also mentioned, uh, load balancing was, was, was difficult, is difficult. And in order to uh, um, continuously improve the robotic solutions, it took other uh, skills and competencies of employees to adopt these new um, improvement routines, uh, which is time costly. So they actually came to the conclusion that that um, on a certain extent, when you invest in technology, a certain level of lean is necessary to make the next step. As, as, you, as you might remember, in the first case, it was the other way around. So um, what have we learned from this case is that you, do no, you should not invest in the machinery only. Uh, also invest a lot of time in introducing these new complex technologies uh, because the operational routines and also continuous improvement routines both on the patterning as the uh, enacting aspect are changing and um, as the manager stated uh, you need to explain your employees why you change how you change and what is expected from them so he mentioned that uh, when you invest in these new technologies, uh, prepare them well and be aware that the skills uh, and continuous improvement skills and the operational skills are very different and that you should invest in it. Um, also that Industry 4.0 technologies, uh, when adopted uh, without uh, uh, fast uh, adoption of industry 4.0 technology uh, has process implement leads that's to uh, process implications um, uh, which are not locally solved but on uh, between uh, departments that makes it even more complex and is a is, is a higher level of uh, uh, abstract thinking is needed to solve problems so when you invested in it already it's not actually doable to um, to improve local projects because that will lead to sub optimization and will have a lot of effect on the other processes after uh, after this process um, so in this specific case he also mentioned a few times that the, 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 the robotics and the communication between the robotics but also human robotic interaction 
uh, asks for new management skills and communication training. Uh, in sum, uh, we found that actually these three cases followed a rather different path in their uh, majority towards industry 4.0 or lean 4.0, where the one focused on a lean driven journey and came to the conclusion that new technologies are helpful for them to, uh, to get to the optimal result. The other organization invested a lot in technology and came to the conclusion, hey, we need other skills and opportunities and continuously improve our processes and came to the conclusion that we, they need to invest in lean a bit more. While the other, uh, where the second case, did a bit simultaneously with, yeah, with somewhat more uh, chaotic uh, uh, result. Um, what we would like to do is that uh, you have now uh, had a brief explanation about from Janus about the Lean Maturity Index, and we described three cases and their Lean 4.0 journey. We would like you to ask. We would like to ask you to go to the uh, www.menti.com and use the following link. And uh, if you would like to. Uh, Say, state in the chat whether you whether you are able to uh, see the uh, the Menti uh, uh, surrounding. Then I would like to uh, oh, wait. I'll just I can do it already. Uh, okay. When you go to menti.com, where is my cursor? Oh here. When you go to menti.com. You are uh, and use the uh, the code above. So one three zero five eight seven one six. Then you can answer this question. And I'm really we are really curious in how you would uh, center your own organization in terms of lean maturity and the technology technological maturity. Yeah, maybe good to say uh, when you go to menti.com and you use the code your uh, mouse becomes uh, a little dot and this dot you can place within this model. Yeah. So where we are very curious uh, where your organization is right now. The first nice. one is already. Oh, of course, all the result, all the uh, statements are uh, anonymously, we can't track uh, anything. <laughs> no. But uh, if you are able, if you want, willing to, you can just uh, uh, elaborate your dot. Okay, we have six responses so far. Yeah. So what we uh, already see is that everyone is somehow um, close to the middle line that we see as the opt of the most. Yeah, it, it, and theoretically, yeah. it would be the most optimal way. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. Eight dots. Okay. Um, is there someone who would like to elaborate why he he or she picked uh, specifically that dot? You can uh, just uh, use your mic if you want to. If someone's keen. Or in the chat. Okay. We'll come back to that uh, later. Jans also uh, will uh, elaborate that. But it's good to see that it's it's funny to see that uh, that everyone is surrounding the uh, the dotted dotted line. We have a, a next uh, question for you. Oh. And that is what will be, according to you, what will be the optimal route in order to uh, develop lean, uh, of in, in order to become a lean 4.0 organization? Four responses. You are really <laughs> like minded. <laughs> Any other thoughts? OK, God, look, good, good to see.
OK. 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 And Patrick, may I ask you why you what you have what you what you chose and why you choose this uh, op, this route? Sure. sure. Um, so um, I'm uh, uh, the the quality manager of the Ubink uh, Center Exam Group. Just to give you a, a feeling, we're located in Duisburg, and we produce um, everything that goes to the to the shell of the the firm living uh, your house. Mm -hmm. um, we've been working now for yeah, six years on, on lean manufacturing and for about three years now on uh, in, uh, Industry 4.0. Mm -hmm. And during this time, we came to the conclusion that you first have to optimize your processes before you, uh, let's say, automate uh, your, your output. If you do it the other way around, uh, we see that we do a lot of investments in the wrong processes or the wrong process steps. So that's why I choose uh, for first optimize your processes and then do uh, yeah, uh, the improvements uh, according to an industry 4.0. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your elaboration. It's good to know. I think Janus will, uh, will uh, get on to you, <laughs> get back to you. Um, Thank you. Um, and what about uh, if look who's more? Okay. Um, and uh, and Aiden Walsh, what did you? What was your option? And would you like to elaborate why you chose that trajectory? Aiden. Sure. Yeah. Um. Just to introduce myself, my uh, name's Aidan Walsh. I'm a lecturer in management studies at Waterford Institute of Technology and also involved in a research centre um, that we just recently uh, received funding for um, looking at it in industry 4.0. Mm -hmm. um, similar to the previous um, uh, Patrick uh, responded, I think you've got to do some sort of process optimization in terms of understanding your process a uh, deep dive in how they work and how they work in relation to your customers and uh, understand what your customers want before you embed technology. Um, uh, I also think that somewhat this is probably, uh, this question is probably context dependent and uh, very much on the organizations and some organizations mm, by their strategy, they may have, uh, they may have uh, identified a gap in the market that they've use technology to take advantage of that gap uh, and they, they might be coming to us another way around so their technology might be more advanced um yeah but they may not have adopted lean yet and they may be coming to lean um uh, laterally we've seen this with some technology organizations where they um, send participants on our master's program mm -hmm. and they've already very well developed in terms of their technology particularly software organizations but um possibly not so much developed in terms of um, their understanding of lean and how it can benefit um, their organization and processes in terms of delivering products or services to customers. Okay, yeah, yeah, a, a good point. I really, I, uh, I, I can relate. I think it's uh, context dependent. Uh, so uh, thank you for your uh, uh, addition. Um, okay, then we would thank like you. back to the. We hopefully you have a discussion afterwards, but. Uh, Okay, to go back to the uh, to the presentation, uh, I started from the start. Uh, okay, oh, that's a lot of uh, slides. Okay, um, so that w that concludes uh, uh, the part of Melody and I, and uh, uh, Janus will take it over from here again. Uh, afterwards, hopefully, we have an interesting uh, discussion. Uh, uh, yeah, related to what we've just uh, seen. So, Janus. Stage is yours. Yeah, th thank you very much, uh, Mitchell, Melanie. Uh, well, you've seen three cases, three cases uh, where companies were positioned on the lean improvement maturity level, and they did have a certain level with respect to uh, uh, technology. Um, based upon other research, we have made this graph, that this, this shaded graph, is the graph where companies are. 
And this is based upon a survey among uh, 60 companies uh, where we have seen that uh, if companies do have a certain level of uh, technological advancement, then they need to have a certain level of, of, of lean. So we could not find companies in this area, in this wide area, where they have a lot of industry 4.0 without having lean in their company. We simply could not find companies in this area. So I have to see what in what area you were positioning uh, Rose, uh, the, the one of the companies. But uh, this area is quite big. So when you have, you can locally, you can uh, implement some, uh, some robots or cobots, but at a certain moment, there's a ceiling and you need uh, for, the, for the higher connectivity uh, where feasibility, traceability, where you need to have product and resource information collected and, and linked and to be used, then you need a level of, uh, of, of lean in order to have profit out of it, to really have the quality improvements you, you want to have. On the other hand, we have seen that there are companies, there are companies they are, uh, who are re relatively highly high in this area without having a lot of industry 4.0. But they all have a kind of computerization. Computers and information, uh, we could not find very lean companies uh, that do not have any computer at all or, or do not use information systems. So apparently all companies use com information systems. But you can be very high lean without a lot of industry 4.0. So that's why the, the, the area above this uh, uh, about above this line is larger than the area below that line. So that's one observation, what we have from our uh, research. Um, then of course, we, we also uh, try to check what's happening uh, with the companies who are in, the, in these gray areas. And then basically, uh, and to be a little bit short, we distinguished uh, three types, types of companies. Of course, you can be more or less lean or more or less digital. But here you see, we call it the management controlled factory. And here in the middle, we call it the digitally controlled or the digitally supported controlled factory. And here we see the social digital controlled factory. These are just names, probably not completely the correct names. But to be a little bit more precise, to be a little bit more precise, the, the managerial controlled factory, uh, the information systems have limited functionality and they are also not connected. And we, we say industry 2.0, also not highly uh, automated. Management spends substantial time on firefighting. So the company is functionally organized. Improvements come from the management. So that's what we see in companies that are not really using Industry 4.0 and are not using very much lean. One level higher, then we see that the digitally supported controlled factory, well, they have information systems that have good functionality. They are to a certain extent connected. The information exchange with shop floor control is limited. And there is a gap, and like in the first case uh, that uh, Emily and Mitchell, uh, uh, Melanie and Mitchell presented, um, there is an, uh, there's an, there's a, uh, there is an, uh, a gap between management and, uh, and shop floor, and the information exchange is limited and no real-time data. So the information is pushed to the workflow, but uh, not coming back. Improvements, uh, but they are basically local, but initiated by management. Industry 3.0, uh, management experience a gap between information coming from the systems and reality. That's what I told. Slowly moving towards semi-autonomous semi teams. 
And then the most important area, because that's a vision, that's an idea about what kind of companies, what kind of factories should should companies thrive for. And it's quite general, and you may specify it for, for every context. But there we say, well, information systems are fully connected. Uh, information is everywhere available. And that's the promise of Industry 4.0. And because it is everywhere available, we can also do useful things with it everywhere. And there is no gap between information and reality. Um, improvements are local as well as, as cross, as well as cross departmental and focused on improving value streams. I think that's also what we want to do in, in, in Lean, but I think that's also in the social digital control factory. Then an important sentence, the semi-autonomous teams, there are teams. And because uh, also in the Lean area, and we learned that, and, and also in industry 4.0, uh, take the last case, working in teams is important because it becomes complex. You cannot solve it on your own. You need to work. You need to work in teams, and also teamwork gives fun. I think it's a good, it's a pleasure, it's, it's, it's a pleasure for people to work in teams, to to feel part of a whole. So semi-autonomous teams, and they are fully responsible for parts and value streams. For 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 parts of the value streams. Uh, they can become more responsible because of they get more information about their performance and what's going wrong. So the autonomy increases. And that's also important. That also creates uh, teams, that's the idea, which are stable. So which are able to produce in a certain time period a certain amount of jobs. Uh, and that makes... Uh, so intelligent software then is used for the coordination between teams because that can become quite complex. And also for the links to suppliers and external, external customers. So more and more intelligent software, which take, takes into account the situation of the semi-autonomous teams, but also the situation of the customers. Then you have complex issues, combinatorial issues, when to produce for which customer, in what time, how to make use of, uh, how to cluster jobs in order that it is produced better in, in a certain semi-autonomous team. Those are difficult questions, and we need intelligent software for that to solve that. Uh, management focus on realizing an agile factory. So because flexibility and flexibility and agility becomes more and more important new technologies come new customers come and that asks a lot of attention so managers focus on realizing an agile factory well to strengthen this a little bit more uh, i've got some citations of of managers from an earlier session um, here lean 4.0 strengthens semi-autonomous teams um, this is a citation of a manager. He says, well, our staff uses apps eh, created by ourselves, capturing and reporting process data. On top, we provide digital work instructions and other process relevant data in a digital way to them. The effect is that people are more empowered and produce better quality. And another citation of him, because the more real-time feedback from the shop floor, we can see that our operations team now have more time for continuous improvement, need less time for organizing the day-to-day -day work because it is it is organized. And citation two, um, uh, the, the problems uh, are pinpointed earlier within the group. Workflow has more information, should be able to re react more quickly. Also, the communication to a quality department is quicker and easier, so they are, are quickly, more quickly supported by other departments. Uh, and data analytics should help the workforce to choose the right problem to fix first. Uh, here you see data transparency. Uh, it creates more empowerment of the workforce. Um, of course, 
how the data uh, the data remains an issue. So also many managers, I didn't take it in this uh, slide yet, but many managers say, well, to select the good data and to learn people how to interpret interpret this data, uh, what can be done with the data remains an, an important issue. So you see that Lean 4.0 strengthens auto autonomous teams. And uh, that's also why we, why we think that autonomy and autonomous teams, semi-autonomous teams, becomes a part of the socio-technical, socio-digital company. Jan, uh, yes? I interrupt. There's an interesting question in the chat from uh, Kay Stahl. Okay. Um, he asked, based upon this taxonomy, do you state that a high level of lean maturity is impossible without fully connected information systems? Uh, yes, I think uh, I think so. I think uh, I think basically. Uh, uh, Well, fully connected. Uh, let me let me go. I will go very quickly. Here you see uh, you can have a high lean uh, maturity without having a lot of connection, probably. But but I think connectivity and and information, a lot of information, helps you to create to improve your value streams and to make your value streams better. So I believe that a high Connectivity is important, so probably this this line could be more in this direction. Could be more in this direction. But this is what we have seen from uh, from. Uh, it's also published in a paper. This is what we've seen. We could not find a company in this area. So where a company says, "Well, I position myself in this area," we could not find that. But we could find companies in this area. So there are companies having a, a high level of of lean without having too much connectivity between all the subsystems so so the answer on your questions i do not state that basically so lean you can lean do you can do lean quite a lot of lean without having a lot of industry 4.0 but you cannot have a lot of industry 4.0 without having lean I hope this is clear. If not, um, well, Lean 4.0 strengthens horizontal and vertical coordination. So when we asked uh, the managers, in this case, about the impact of Industry 4.0, and they say, well, coordination is always important. So either they use Industry 4.0 or not, coordination is always important. Um, uh, well, this is basically uh, industry 4.0 can help to improve and gain levels which were not accessible without industry 4.0. So that's basically, uh, yeah, an, an, an answer also on, on, on the question of case. I had to say, well, industry 4.0 can help to improve and to gain even higher levels of, of coordination than without industry 4.0 because we can have relevant information real time on every position uh, where needed. And to give a to give a nice example of a, of a company uh, uh, where I've been, uh, that's a company they have uh, they have software that monitors very precisely all the uh, work in process just before the team, and every morning. Uh, the team is all the teams team leaders are coming together, checking what is uh, the the whip the the work in process before every team and what are the number of urgent urgent jobs within this within within this inventory and then to make decisions about the assignment of workers to teams, to uh, in order to focus on 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 urgent jobs together. So they are autonomous teams. But they have the information to make together quick decisions. 
So, uh, um, well, change management uh, to break the silos. That also means that that uh, the opportunities with industry 4.0, you will get them, but you need lean. You need to have you break. The, you have to break down the silos. You have to make. You need to have uh, cross-functional uh, cooperation in teams. So thinking about value streams uh, over uh, over uh, over more departments. And here, uh, management is strategically oriented. We ask them, we ask the managers, what happens with your role? And this is an old picture from uh, from Toyota. Not the, the not the, the arrow is not from Toyota, but this is an old picture of Toyota from the 1980s, saying, well, uh, operators are, and with respect to improvement, they are doing things, and when there is a deviation, then they learn from it and they repair it. That's called maintenance. Uh, the supervisor is also a lot busy with maintenance. So is obeying the rules, and if a rule is not obeyed, then repair it. So that's called maintenance. 50% uh, of the time, they are also, they're busy with Kaizen activities. So if there is a deviation, and if some structural uh, measures are needed, then the supervisor is spending attention to it. The department manager, so the, the operations manager, is even spending more time on, on Kaizen activities. So changing the procedures, changing processes, uh, in, uh, new technology, etc., and all kind of Kaizen improvements they are busy with. And top management also does Kaizen, but is more focused on development, strategic development. And we asked operations managers what they, we asked all the managers what they think about the role of operations managers in the future. And they all to told that because of the impact of, of Industry 4.0 and the complexity of it, it becomes more and more important that uh, department managers, operations managers, department managers become more and more part of the brains of top management. Because for top management, it might be very difficult. For them, it's already very difficult. But they can become more and more the brains of top management, and they should belong part of, of the management teams of, uh, of companies. So they, they will be more and more busy with strategic, strategic issues. That's what they told. So that means Lean 4.0 means basically that operations managers, there is more information, more autonomous groups, more software to coordinate the work between the groups, but the managers have to think about development and responding to customers and implementing the correct and choosing the correct technology. So far, we have uh, 10 minutes left. So the floor is uh, the floor is open. Are there questions? So please. Yeah. Or comments. Or ideas. Otherwise, I'll start with uh, I start with a round just to ask your opinion. So. It's very nice to see Dirk here. Uh, Dirk, what's your thoughts about uh, about this, Dirk? Uh, Hello, Jens, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. They didn't see that one coming. <laughs> uh, at, at the moment, I'm looking into the same uh, questions. As you might know, I'm, I'm local stakeholder of the Growing 4.0 project from the Hanse Hogeschool. And they are developing uh, with some uh, uh, schools from, from five countries around the North Sea uh, tools for, for uh, introducing 4.0 to uh, 